Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us here at the Watsco Center. You know, it's a bittersweet day for the University of Miami because on one hand, we're closing a chapter on one of the greatest coaching runs in the history of, of hurricane athletics. But on the other hand, that same coach will continue to be an integral part of the hurricane family. And for that reason, we're truly, truly excited about what's ahead. Katie Meyer spent 19 seasons coaching the University of Miami women's basketball team. She won 362 games, more than any coach, men or women, in our school's history. Katie led the Canes to the NCAA tournament 10 times, including eight of nine years in a stretch from 2011 to 2019. In 2023, she led us on a memorable ride, taking the University of Miami to the Elite Eight the first time in our program history. Katie coached five All-Americans and six WNBA draft picks. She was National Coach of the Year in 2011. She was inducted into the University of Miami Sports Hall of Fame in 2017. I could go on and on with her accomplishments and the accomplishments of her teams. But more importantly, Katie Meyer made people passionate about Miami women's basketball. She made kids want to come and play for her. She made coaches want to come and learn from her. She made fans want to come and cheer for her. She created a culture in our community and a camaraderie that, be, that has become a hallmark of this program and will continue for years to come. When Katie approached me early this week about stepping away from coaching, we started to discuss how she could continue to be involved with Miami athletics in terms of advising and engaging and inspiring future hurricanes. I came away from that conversation energized and excited, and I trust that Katie did as well. She will be a tremendous asset for our department moving forward, helping us with mentorship, leadership training, alumni engagement, friend raising and fundraising for women's sports, and serving as a great ambassador for our university. Fitzroy Anthony will be serving as our interim head coach and we will immediately start a national head coaching search. But today is a day to recognize and celebrate Katie and all she has meant to our athletic department and our campus community. Katie, on behalf of all of us at the University of Miami, thank you for the 19 terrific seasons and we look forward to working together on many more things to come. Ladies and gentlemen, Katie Meyer. beautiful. Uh, thank you, Dan, and, and thank everyone for coming. I've really been um, surprised and, and so touched by the response to my announcement, because in reality, I've just dramatically dropped a, a lot on, on Dan's plate and my staff's plates and my players and their families, as well as so many other people, and it's really hard um, to process these things for yourself. Um, it's really difficult to see the people that you love so much and respect that that worked so hard for you and with you to go through this but I'm so grateful for your leadership Dan and for the leadership of this university you know um, that's one of the reasons Miami is going to continue to be great in this ever changing world of collegiate athletics it's uh, Miami has um, seen the changes coming and been very proactive and very innovative. The team of President Frank and Joe Echeverria and Rudy Fernandez and Dan Radakovich and his staff, it's a brilliant team. It's a flexible model that can navigate all these complexities. And as I say thank you, I think everyone here would agree. You know, for over 30 years I've, 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 I've been a coach, just coach. And um, it's a title I'll always cherish. It means so much to me. But sometimes at like the grocery store or, or at a restaurant or something, it's kind of strange because really um, people don't know your name. <laughs> they just say, hey, coach, how are you? And uh, it gets a little awkward because I, I might not know their name either. 
And so I say, I'm, I'm doing great. Really nice person that delivers the mail. Um, <laughs> and it's, uh, but I've loved every single minute of being coach. It's been an honor of a lifetime from UNC Asheville to Tulane to Charlotte and to my, my beloved, beloved Miami. It's been my privilege to serve. And uh, I've, I've even really weirdly loved the losses. Luckily, they weren't as common, and sometimes they were shocking, and they hurt a ton. But usually that night or the next morning, there were always texts from players asking to watch film. Coach, how can I be better? The next practice, the team was always open to work their butts off and get better. And when you've had such a loyal and fiercely competitive staff like I've had through the years, huge growth occurs. And I feel that way about my retirement. There have been so many celebrations, so many wins, so much growth, so much player development, so much staff advancement, and so much community engagement. And I'm so grateful. Look at all those banners. Look at the 100% graduation rate of all the players that have stayed four years here. Can we hang a banner, too, for that, please, and maybe put David Wyman's name on it? So, so with all that great, what, why retire and why now? And honestly, it's, it's truly every year as a leader, uh, you do some type of analysis of where you're at. And through the years, I've had my entire staff do what's called a SWOT analysis, where you go strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Um, I've done all these different tools. Um, and in any case, you do some type of leadership calculus. What's the formula? And you base it on your principles. And for this, I've always said three principles. Number one, always, what is best for the University of Miami and this overall program? That is always the most important thing in every decision I've ever made. I am a hurricane, and I'm fiercely loyal to those who have had my back. Number two, how do I take care of my people, my incredible players, and my superstar staff, who I enjoy and owe everything to, what's in their best interest? As a side note, you know, the last day, my staff, when they all found out, they certainly had a seismic shift of their emotions and said, a, you know, they all gathered in my office and every single one of them, instead of thinking about themselves in that moment where there was a lot going on in their personal lives, this is a real blow. Um, instead of thinking about themselves, they said, Coach, how, how can we help? Uh, Margie and Lonnie snapped into action, uh, my right hand, my left hand. They did their roles, helped me figure out what I was going to say, and, and got me focused on the next task. And the, and the coaches gathered immediately and rallied and got on the phone with recruits, and, and Fitzroy was immediately prepared to lead, immediately prepared to lead. It was incredible, and they deserve to be honored. And this third principle, the third principle of making a decision is this one's a little bit about yourself. It's like, how do I navigate and lead? Where's my growth? Is it on the uptick? Is there a different path? Are times changing? And in that calculus, it was, it was pretty clear. The timing is sudden, but it allows for the most flexible and aggressive pursuit of greatness for this program. And this program will win a national championship while continuing to watch young ladies walk across this stage with their diplomas. I have so many people to thank, and, and it begins with all of my ex-players and staffs. It was a hard day yesterday. People honor you and humble you with their commitment to you, and they trust you with their futures, and it's never easy to walk away and break that trust. I'm very grateful um, to be able to stay on here at the U and continue to help and, and lead and grow and, and, and mentor in, in a different way. The messages from the players and their families yesterday about impact and growth are the ones I'm going to print out and save. I'm so lucky to have met my wife Hunter here in Miami, and her presence is a bright light of support and dedication. My family, the incredible Brady Bunch, and the hot mess of love and generosity and support, uh, uh, they won and lost every single game with me. And of course, our fabulous fans and supporters, who are really now friends and family to me as well. But this is the one thank you that a lot of people really miss. There are so many athletic department staff members who are here today who show up for the bus send-offs and the NCAA celebrations and the conference tournaments, and they support our players and they give you the foundation where you feel as a coach that they are your village. 
and I thank you all for everything you do for our, this program. But I also want to thank the women's basketball alumna who I didn't coach. Well, some of them are here today that I did coach, but who I didn't coach, who came here before me, and they, they played for somebody else. Of all the emotional messages I received yesterday, those women stood up. They owned this program as proud hurricanes, and I love that about Miami, and that tradition needs to continue. That doesn't happen anywhere else. In every one of my uh, 24 years as a head coach and the first individual player meeting that I have with a player, in the very first meeting, I have a sheet called My Journey. It asks a series of questions about who they are and their family, what their values are, their character, their favorite book, you know, um, who's the most important person in their life, who's their uh, inspiration. And um, they fill it out on the first day and we talk, and then I put it in their file and I save it. And I revisit it on senior night in their last home game. And I read it and I cry, and then I write them an emotional card about our journey together and how grateful I am. And it really reminds us all of why we do what we do. And also for 24 years, I've always set my office up in the very same way where if you have a meeting with me, I'm sitting here, you're sitting across from me. As I'm talking to you, uh, whatever reason the meeting might be, good or bad, there's always been two words behind my players. One word is inspire, and the other word is encourage. And as they're, they're hearing my message, they're looking at me, and there's always been one word behind my head, and it's dream. I'm supposed to encourage and inspire. That's my job. And they need to dream. And I just want to thank every single one of those players who have let me share in their journey. I promise to always encourage and inspire as long as they promise to keep dreaming. I'm still here for you, and I'm forever Kane. And maybe now, you don't have to call me coach. <laughs> Just call me Kate. Thank you so much, everybody. going to transition to questions. Um, I'm going to awkwardly move this podium right now, and we're going to bring this table up. Obviously, very, very surprising that you're stepping down and whatnot. Um, just how hard was it to hold back the emotions just now? <laughs> did I? <laughs> you did. I thought you were going to break down a lot more. Um, how hard is that going to be, that transition, though, from people always calling you coach and now Kate? Because I know forever I'm going to always be calling you coach. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I still, I mean, I, I, I'm so proud to be a coach, and I, that's why I'm so grateful to Dan and the team here that uh, is allowing me to continue to coach in a different way. I don't know what I would do if that wasn't there for me. Um, I, I don't know who I am besides that. You know, I, I have a wonderful family. I have a wonderful relationship with my wife. I have wonderful people, but um, it's who I am. And I'm so happy that in this moment um, that was offered to me as, a, as something that I can continue to serve. I just want to be generous and serve. Yeah. We spoke to uh, Coach Al just this week and spoke about how it's changed, how yeah. the landscape of basketball has changed. He said that when practice is no longer fun, that's when he'll know 
Yeah. It's time to go. Your case. What was that moment? It's 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 kind of like um. You know, practices are still. I mean, that's what we do. We teach, right? But it's it's more so. Like I said, uh, there's a leadership calculus. I do it every year. I really honor this profession. I honor this university, and I'm going to give it my all in whatever I'm doing. And there have been some changes, which my secret sauce, my style, how I dig into young people and their families and the relationship, and it holds. And it's you know, we talk about sometimes like the palm trees in Miami where. You know, there's going to be storms, and they're blowing, and they're blowing, and they're blowing. Um, but it's the big banyan trees that get uprooted and cause a lot of, you know, but I, I am a, the palm tree that's going to hang in there with you, and they're going to get through storms, and the families and the players, and that relationship just keeps you, you know, and you withstand. And I think that is changing a little bit in, 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 in the model. And I'm not saying one's better than the other, but the model definitely is changing, and, and that type of investment and that type of long-term relationship is is more rare it still exists but that's why i think miami is going to win a national championship because miami is aware of that change and is a is ahead of it all coach what are you most looking forward to doing in your new role in my new role yeah i have so much to learn so like 30 years of being a coach right and then like wow there's a whole other side that i don't know a hell heck of a lot about i think i have a great skill set for it but i'm going to be a rookie it's great Brown draft pick. <laughs>